This is Friday, March 15th, 2019. We are at the Woburn Senior Center, and this tape is part of the Morse Institute Library's continuing Veterans Oral History Project. My name is Maureen Sullivan, and we are privileged to have with us today Margie Labette. Welcome, Margie. Thank you. May I ask when you were born? I was born in Malden, Massachusetts, February the 18th, 1926. And where do you currently live? Uh, where do you currently live? Which, what town? What town? Yeah. I'm, right now I'm in Winchester. Okay. And your marital status? Something's not coming okay. across. Okay. Something's just not coming across. Okay. Uh, your marital status? I'm a widow. Do you have children? Yes, I have three children. Grandchildren? I have six great grandchildren and six grandchildren. And tell us, uh, you were born and raised in Malden? Yes, I was. Can you tell us about Malden when you were growing up? Uh, when we were growing up, we lived in, uh, most of the time you had to rent, and um, we moved a lot, and we met a lot of wonderful neighbors. Um, we did a lot together with our neighborhood, and uh, we got very involved in uh, the town, in the, well, it was a city, we got very involved in whatever was going on in the town. The neighbors were so friendly that we used to go on picnics and everything together. And I understand your father was a World War I veteran. Yes, he was. Do you remember what branch he served? He was in the Army. And did he uh, say anything about his experiences? The thing is, he didn't speak about his experiences. It was kind of strange. We were brought up to you know, value the veterans because of my dad, and he joined the American Legion. So we knew about the war. He would tell us about the war, but he didn't tell us too much about the trenches and all that, just maybe if we would ask a few questions, but he never really would come right out and talk about his experience. And what did your father do for a living? Uh, he was, worked in the uh, Chelsea Navy Yard. He was a lead rigger. How about your mother? My mother was a homemaker. And do you, did you have siblings? Yes, we had five girls and a boy. Growing up in Malden, were you made aware of events happening overseas? Yes, we were. My dad always mentioned, you know, he'd read the papers. At that time, we, was re we were reading papers and listening to radio at that time. And uh, yes, he would take the time to explain to us, you know, to be, you know, Think about the other countries because of what they were going through, and especially England had a lot of problems. Do you remember when Pearl Harbor was bombed? Yes, I do. I was in uh, BB Junior High School at the time, in 1942, and it was quite uh, devastating because no one really would have believed something like that would have so happen so close to us. Now, after the United States entered the war, did you have any friends or relatives into the military? Yes. Yes, I did. I had cousins. Uh, one family in New York had eight boys, and they all went in, but they had to separate them. And uh, my cousins, a lot of cousins, and uncles, yes, I did. I understand that one of your uncles didn't make it. No, it was my, my uh, husband's uh, brother okay. mm -hmm. that was over in uh, World War II. Mm -hmm. And they had, uh, he had, um, well, I had my father was in World War I, my brother was in World War II, and I didn't meet my husband until later. <laughs> and um, at that time, uh, he had, uh, actually had four brothers, one had died as a child, but they all went into the Army, Navy, Coast Guard, and one of the boys did not make it back, mm -hmm. and the mother was a gold star mother. Mm 
-hmm. And I make a point of doing that, saying that. Now I include the fathers as well. And your brother served as well. My, my brother served in World War II in the Army. Mm -hmm. uh, anything more about that? Was he infantry, artillery? Oh, he was in infantry. Okay. And uh, I, I believe, and he never showed me, but he, he did get a medal, a few medals. So you grew up during uh, the home front years right. in World War II. Uh, tell us a little bit about that. Oh, the home front. Well, that's, that's something we still, every once in a while, somebody will mention, you were there, what happened? Well, my mother used to save the grease to send over, and they used it for the guns or whatever. And uh, we used to make packages for the uh, soldiers overseas. Every Sunday, they would have a list of soldiers, or my cousins or relations and my brother, whoever was in the service at the time, would send us their buddies' names that weren't having any family that would send them packages. So my mother would get boxes, like shoe boxes. We had a friend that owned a shoe store, and she would get these boxes, and all the five girls would line them up, and we would put all the, uh, you know, like shaving cream and all the stuff that they would be able to use. And uh, what, what else did you do? Well, during World War II, I was in high school, and I did join the Red Cross, and I went to the, uh, the different hospitals, as I mentioned, Chelsea Naval, Bedford. Uh, we even went to Air, Air Force Base. Uh, we also went to the Boston Common, and we joined the USO. My sisters and I used to go in. And we used to bring, you know, serve them donuts and coffee, almost like my dad <laughs> said. That's the one thing my dad did say, that the Red Cross gave them donuts when they were overseas. I remember that one. And uh, we used to go to the dances at the Fargo building, and they had dances on the common as well. And um, we would take, my mother would make big dinners on Sundays, and uh, we would bring the fellas home to have dinner. And, well, she, she was one of these people that if she saw a veteran, she'd say, remember, your father was a veteran. Be, you know, she'd tell you to be very honorable to them. Mm -hmm. And I think they, now we try to tell people, if you see a veteran, just say thank you. That's mm -hmm. all, they're not asking for anything. They just would appreciate that you mm -hmm. know they, they served. Mm -hmm. I understand you are also a member of the Victory Troubadours. Yeah, I was with the troop shows. They came to the high school, and they were looking for talents to go overseas or in the hospitals and the camps. And um, they picked us two. We had to we had to have a tryout. We had to sing, dance. We were doing plays and shows, and uh, we were allowed out of school for like two weeks at a time. Uh, we did that quite a few. At, I think I did it for two years. And did you, uh, during the war, did you keep in touch with your relatives? Uh, yes, I did. We wrote all the time. They had these envelopes that they would make, made like an Air Force, you know, air, air mail. And you could write on those and you could send them out. Um, and most of the time when theirs came back, and a lot of our cousins sent us their buddies, and, and they didn't have anyone to write to, so they would say, my, cousin, my uncle would say, they have five girls in that family, do you want to write? <laughs> do you remember anything else, uh, like blackouts? Oh, yes, my sister was an air raid warden, and she had the helmet and the uh, band, and she had a flashlight. And they would go out every night, and they would have to make sure everybody had the dark shades, that there was no light showing. How about rationing? Oh, the rationing, we had the stamps. We had a book, and you had to put these stamps, and you had to have so many stamps in order to get particular foods. And how about gas rationing? The gas rationing was really bad. There was not that much. Um, at that time, really, there weren't uh, as many cars as there are today. But there was rationing on just about everything. 
So when you traveled through the uh, area hospitals, did you go by bus, by train? No, they picked us up. Oh, they took good. us. They took us to the, they, um, further out, they would take these, um, they, you know, the men's trucks that they traveled in. Mm -hmm. That's how we would go in the trucks. There'd be two sides, you know, with the benches like, and we'd be practicing one show. After we got out of one of them, we'd be practicing for the next one. <laughs> wow. And this was before Route 128 was built, That's too. right, right. Yeah, then, no, they would pick us up from the camps, their camps around here. Mm -hmm. And do you remember when the war ended, like May 1945? Very, very well. We had already invited some of the uh, sailors that had come off a ship that where my dad was. My dad worked for the Chelsea Naval, and he used to bring some of the young fellas over. Um, what happened was when they heard, when we heard it, we all, the young ones, all herded into Boston. And we went on the, uh, it was funny because they had these fire trucks and they were taking people for rides on the fire trucks because it was, it was a, well, it, I'll never forget it because it was so many people. And I mean, it, they were cheering. They were, it was just elated. Uh, we were all elated that we were able to go there. And uh, so it was really the common was loaded, the gardens, the, the, every street. It was fantastic. Mm -hmm. And was this when, when Germany surrendered or when Japan surrendered a few well, months when, later? Well, that was the first one, but uh -huh. both of them. Both, both of, them. of them. We were able to go in for both of them. Mm -hmm. We were lucky. Yeah. So again, during the war, um, how did you get news from overseas? Newspapers, radio? Well, most of the news we got was from newspapers and radio. Mm -hmm. We didn't have the TV and all that extra stuff, you know, mm -hmm. at the time. Uh, what about movie theaters? Did you go to the movies? Yes, we did, and they always had um, these little captions about the veterans and everything, or the soldiers, uh, right before the movies. They always put something on about the news. There was, uh, I can't think of his name off the top of my head, a broadcaster. And he would be always there to tell you what was happening next. Mm -hmm. So the war is over. Hopefully your brother got home okay. My brother did, yes, okay, he did. Okay, good. And what did you do after the war? After the war, because of my father and my brother, I was still going to the veteran hospitals. And um, then I joined the um, VFW, the veterans and um, I've been in, with the veterans almost 40 years, mm -hmm. and I'm still going to the hospitals, and I'm still continuing. I do, now I do uh, veterans programs. I go around and do candlelight services. I march, I'm still marching with the, uh, with the uh, Winchester group. I come to Wuben here and do the programs for them. I started the, um, the program Hmm, 19 years ago for them, and I'm still doing it. So I'm still involved, very involved with veterans. And mm -hmm. that's, that's marvelous. So I understand you went to Boston University. Yes, I did. And what was your major? It was a business administration. Uh -huh. And I've gone to a couple of others, to Stonehill, in a, uh, because of medical, when I worked for medical you had to add on like terminology, medical terminology. So they, they paid for me to go to school and get learn computer. And I understand you also worked uh, for Sheraton, the hotel chain. Yes, I was. When I first graduated from Boston University, I uh, went into Sheraton Corporation and I was a private secretary. And I understand uh, soon after you met your husband. Yeah. Tell us about him. Well, I married, uh, he was in the service with his, uh, and as brothers and everything, one of them was in medical. And I was very close with the, that family because they lived in New Jersey. And, uh, <clears throat> excuse me. And we know that they would take off a little bit and 
it was his oldest brother, and he was the youngest one, and they never had something in common, uh, you know, really, uh, like, foot, well, they all played football, but I mean, as, as a youngster, so young, um, but when they both were into the service, we noticed that when they got older and we were visiting as with our families, we'd noticed they'd take off and we knew they probably might have discussed something that was going on in the war when they were in the service. Mm -hmm. But they never discussed it with the families. We couldn't understand that. Mm -hmm. So what was your husband's name? My husband's name was Frederick Albert Lebetz, mm -hmm. and he was Polish and uh, very proud to be in the service. He joined the American Legion and we lived in New York on Staten Island. Mm -hmm. We had three children and um, we finally came back to Massachusetts eventually. We met at a dude ranch up in upstate New York <laughs> and that's how we, we got together. Uh -huh. But I mean, he was uh, in construction. He was in construction. And he served in the army? He was in the army, oh. and he was in, uh, actually, he was uh, with the, um, well, I, I have to say he was driving trucks and stuff out there. And he, you know, uh, sometimes he would have to drive the colonels. He'd be given duty to drive colonels around and stuff. So I know he was overseas. And um, he was in France, Germany. He was in for three years. Mm -hmm. And I, most of his brothers were too. Okay. And when did you and your husband get married? 1950 in Massachusetts. I lived, he had to come from New York. Uh huh. But you went to New York. Yes. I, at, well, at that time, when you got married, no matter who had the better job or the better money, you went where the husband went, worked. <laughs> Not today. <laughs> and you did have three children. We have three children, mm -hmm. and um, I have a boy, two boys, the two boys that were in the Marines, mm -hmm. and uh, one daughter. The daughter mm -hmm. was the oldest one. And tell us a little more about the two boys. What are their names? One is Frederick. Uh, Lebetz Jr., mm -hmm. and the other one is Robert. And I understand they served in Vietnam. Yes. In Vietnam, Vietnam. Yes. <laughs> okay. So what was uh, what were those times like? That was in like 72 and 74, around that time. Uh-huh. Um, it was kind of hard because, I mean, we at that time we knew it was pretty serious. And we knew the others, during the other wars, the World War I, they always talked about trenches and stuff. They, since they were in the Marines, you know, my, my husband tried to get them to go in the Air Force. He said, at least you'll have a clean bed. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, one went in right after the other. Well, the young one idolized his brother. And so, but uh, luckily, they did both go overseas. They were there for about uh, two years. And uh, they weren't in the same units or anything. They were different units. But um, they brought us some things home from Vietnam. I still have a few things, you know. <laughs> uh, a complete outfit, you know, that they had. <laughs> and did any of your grandchildren enter the military? Uh, yeah, well, not my, uh, my granddaughter. Actually, they hadn't. They were. They weren't existing in, up to the, any time of that time. But um, my daughter did go overseas because her husband was in the Air Force. Mm -hmm. And most of these young people went in in high school. Some of them didn't, like a lot of my friends in high school, they went in like, well, I'd say even my hu husband left high school a month before or two months before to go into the service. So. She met her. Um, she met her husband. He was from New Jersey, and he, they came to. He was in a band, and they came to uh, Massachusetts to Winchester to play, and that's how she met her husband. And then they were going back and forth. And then when he was going in the service, that's when they decided to get married, 
uh, and then he went, she went to England until he went overseas. Mm -hmm. And she stayed there and had two daughters there. <laughs> yeah, they're back now, they're back here now, but he is, her husband's gone, and my husband's gone, so, oh, yeah. Sorry to hear that. And my brother's gone. Mm -hmm. They're all, all, most of them are gone. Mm -hmm. But you still maintain a very active uh, involvement with Veterans Affairs. Oh, yes. BFW Auxiliary, the Red Cross, oh, yeah, as, yeah. as you have mentioned. Yeah, we don't call ladies auxiliary anymore because the men want to come in with the women because their mm -hmm. posts are closing. Uh -huh. If this means anything, uh, we have to get more young people into the, the groups because this is what's going to sustain the veterans because then they can fight for the veterans to get more service like hospital and stuff. Mm -hmm. Margie, what do you think about uh, women entering the military and taking more active roles, especially combat roles? Yeah, I, I don't have any objections to it. Mm -hmm. If they are qualified and, and they think they can do it, women today are doing men's jobs and they're doing fairly well and I think it's up to the individual person and if they think they're qualified and they think they you know I think it's a wonderful thing if they can because I mean women are have been on the front lines since curricular they didn't realize that the nurses were right on the front lines. They only had a tent up with a, the cross on it, the Red Cross. So I mean, if they were that close to the front lines, and I know some women that they're gone now, uh, they met their husbands, well, they both were in the military and they became, she was a captain. Now you can be a major or an, and a general. Because <laughs> I go to some of the conventions they have and we meet a lot of them. And I've gone to Washington quite a few times with the Women's Corps and the different, see, I keep touch with all, most of them. Mm -hmm. So Margie, how important for you is it to uh, maintain uh, your involvement in Veterans Affairs? Oh, I, I would never give it up. I, somebody just asked me recently, as a matter of fact, they just asked me the other day, uh, how long are you gonna keep doing this? because mm -hmm. I keep doing the programs and I go visit the hospitals with the, um, the veterans. And um, I said, as long as I can do it. And I'm hoping that somebody else will take over from me because this is very, very important to me. The, the veterans really need you now, mm -hmm. as well as when they were overseas. Mm -hmm. And Margie, is there anything else you'd like to say before we wrap things up? Well, um, what I would like to say is, as I said before, mm -hmm. I would like to have more young people think about it. And they don't have to be in a group. They can do this on their own as well. Just find out where these uh, veterans are that need a note, need some help. I mean, I, I am right now, I have to think about it because I'm doing so many donations personally for the wounded uh, veterans, uh, wounded warriors, uh, the DAV, because my son was, one of my sons was hurt in the Marines, and um, they can help that way as well. But what I would like to say is, please, please remember to help your tr the troops that are over there now, overseas, and their families. Mm -hmm. They need support, and God bless America. <laughs> Marjorie Lebetz, thank you so much for thank taking you. part in the Natick Veterans Oral History Project. Well, I hope it works out okay. Mm -hmm.